There's this idea floating around the FGC for as long as people have been playing competitively that tier lists don't matter, the difference between high tier and low tier characters is imaginary, and all characters are equally good at the top level of play. No one who says this seems to have any actual evidence supporting it, and I think it's ridiculously optimistic and naive. It also puts a whole lot of faith in the developers, they all somehow managed to perfectly balance the roster of every fighting game. But it's admittedly pretty hard to outright disprove, because what fighting game has truly seen all characters hitting the top level of play? Well, I'm here today with a bulletproof argument that tiers exist, so if you ever hear your dumb friends say tiers aren't real, just link them to this video. Unfortunately, in order to make my argument, we need some context. This game is Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. This character is Scorpion. We're going to be taking a little look at Scorpion's kit. In UMK3, every character's got basically a universal set of normals, with only minor differences in hitboxes, startup, and recovery. These minor differences are based on a character's body type. So for example, Scorpion and Sub-Zero both have the male ninja body type, and they actually have identical hitboxes and hurtboxes on all their basic attacks. There are two main things which make each character unique. The first are auto combos. For Street Fighter players, these are basically target combo sequences. You just hit a series of buttons in order. Generally, these are different for every character, even if they share the same body type. Scorpion has three. The strongest is this one, at 24%. The second feature distinguishing different characters is their special moves. Once again, Scorpion has three. You've got the Spear, which does a little damage, pulls the opponent close, and allows for a follow-up combo. You've got the Teleport Punch, which jumps across the screen and hits the opponent from the rear. It's good for punishing fireballs, but it doesn't lead to a combo on grounded opponents. And you've got the Air Throw. The cool thing about this air throw is if you have a juggle state, you can juggle into it for big damage. The even cooler thing is you can cancel air attacks into the air throw for really big damage. So looking at these tools, let's try and put together a bread and butter punish combo for Scorpion. For most unsafe attacks, you'll probably just do your strongest auto combo. If it's really unsafe, maybe you can start with spear and then do your auto combo. Let's say you jump over a fireball and get a jump in punish. Maybe it's jump punch then your auto combo. Things can get a little bit more complex when you factor in the corner. But we'll say that's it for the time being. Now, some attacks in UMK3 can actually be punished midair. Scorpion's combo routes really open up here. Suddenly you can get a juggle into your spear. Or your teleport? Or even air throw if you wanted. Scorpion's punish damage is significantly higher when he's punishing attacks that recover midair. To put it simply, Scorpion's combo options are excellent in juggles, but generally speaking, he can't really launch the opponent very well. Now let's take a look at another character. This is Human Smoke. In gameplay, Human Smoke is a Scorpion clone. He has all the same hitboxes and hurtboxes on his attacks as Scorpion. He also has exact copies of all of Scorpion's special moves. And he even has all of Scorpion's auto combos. He can do every single combo Scorpion can do. There are two main differences with Human Smoke. One, he walks slightly faster so he can cover greater distances in the same amount of time. Two, he has a couple auto combos that Scorpion just doesn't. One of them launches the opponent. This is huge for his combo game. Punishes where Scorpion just gets an auto combo, Human Smoke gets a long juggle. Compare the damage.
Even in anti-air punishes, human smoke is significantly stronger. Because unlike Scorpion, he can actually launch after Spear. These two characters have exactly the same moveset, except Human Smoke just has 5 auto combos, whereas Scorpion only has 3. And the extra auto combos are really useful, because they significantly raise his damage with no downsides. Even if Scorpion's routes would be preferred for positioning or something, Smoke can just use Scorpion Enders instead. It's impossible to argue that Scorpion is just as good as Smoke in the right player's hands, when Smoke's kit includes the entirety of Scorpion and then some. On most tier lists, Scorpion is regarded to be around the middle of the pack. By contrast, Human Smoke is usually regarded to be top 2. The reasoning is obvious. Human Smoke doesn't need as many combos to win, because he gets more damage out of each opening. Now I know it's rare that it's that cut and dry. When characters have different tools, it gets harder to evaluate which ones are better. Cabal can't do Shiva's Ground Stomp. And Shiva can't do Cabal's Dash. But Shiva's Ground Stomp doesn't work in almost any combos, and it can be punished on reaction every time she uses it. In fact, Cabal can punish it with a relaunch loop. While Cabal's dash is a fantastic punish and neutral tool, which leads to strong combos on the whole cast. Including that relaunch loop, which is a semi-infinite that works on 10 characters of the roster of 23. Lo and behold, people regard Cabal as a top tier and Shiva as a bottom tier. Why? Some tools are more useful than others. Characters with good tools tend to win, and characters with bad tools tend to lose. In short, some characters are better than others, or in fewer words, tiers exist. Another common argument against tiers is that they don't matter until you're playing at the highest level. I learned these human smoke combos in 5 minutes. Only 5 minutes into the game, human smoke is a better character than Scorpion. Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 is a surprisingly good and deep fighting game, and it's very, very easy, so if you're not new to fighting games, you can probably learn a character and start actually competing within about 20 minutes of picking it up. It's on Fightcade, so you can set up netplay pretty quickly. This particular version I'm playing right now is called Ultimate Cup, and it's a hack of the arcade version with added training mode as well as some other features. I'll leave a link in the description. Thanks for watching.